Hi, it's Dwyer. Today is June the 26th, 2018. The reason for this video is to try to help the sport of boxing. Because right now, something awfully crazy is going on. And a lot of people are involved. Right? It's really up to us to say this is an outrage. For those who remember the late 80s, early 90s, you remember that great fight that took place between two great heavyweights of that era, Riddick Bowe versus Lennox Lewis? <clears throat> you remember that fight? You remember the Juan Manuel Lopez versus Yorkis Gamboa fight a bit more recently? When there was outcry, both guys were unbeaten. Everyone wanted to see that fight. Promoters supposedly were putting together that fight for several fights. And we kept hearing things like, oh, it will always be there. Right? Apparently, both of those fighters were supposed to be so unbeatable. Apparently, the hype was so real that we understood that they were on a collision course with each other and that the fight didn't have to be made today. The fight could be made tomorrow or the day after that or the week after that or the month after that or the fighter's next fight or after that. And then, of course, the fight never happened. Right? Just like the Riddick Bo Lennox Lewis fight never happened. Right? Both guys, same era. At one time, they were heavyweight champions. Right, Step aside, money was paid and accepted. But we were assured this fight's going to happen soon. We just can't tell you the date. It will, as they like to say, as I've said already in this video, it will always be there. Right, It'll only get bigger. It got so big, folks, it never happened. Right? How about Adonna Stevenson versus Jean Pascal? Folks, I, I, I'm still waiting for that one. Right? Jean Pascal had a great career. Right? But his career has ended now, hasn't it? One would have thought, wow, two guys, same era, both guys fighting out of Canada. Hype around both guys. And yet the fight never happened. I thought that fight would always be there. What about more recently? Mikey Garcia, future Hall of Famer, versus Jorge Linares, future Hall of Famer. Right, think about it. These guys were both champs at 135 pounds. These guys talked about fighting each other. In other words, you you know go on a website and see a story where Mikey Garcia is open to fight Jorge Linares. Jorge Linares would talk about wanting to unify the titles. You thought, wow, this is great. Jorge's a future Hall of Famer. This would be a Hall of Fame dust-up. Who would win? Mikey's still unbeaten. You thought, wow, Jorge's been on a great streak, hadn't lost in years. As I like to say, what could possibly go wrong? Well, folks, understand, we, uh, we didn't get any of those fights, right? They told us that these fights would always be there until they weren't, right? Life has unexpected twists, right? You go to a friend's wedding, he's the luckiest man in the world. He calls you two years later, he's in divorce court, right? You simply can't predict these things. That dream job doesn't work out, right? Things change. So, so the fight will always be their crowd. And there's so many of you that it's impacting multiple fights. 
I'd like to know what the hell is going on right now that's keeping Anthony Joshua, an unbeaten heavyweight champion, from trying to defend his title against Deontay Wilder, an unbeaten heavyweight champion. Folks, you don't get these fights that often. Think Ali Fraser. Think Spinks versus Iron Mike Tyson. So you have this fight here right now. Both of these guys have had rough moments in the ring. Wasn't that Anthony Joshua on the canvas against Vladimir Klitschko? How did he look when he got off the canvas? Did he give you the impression that was a flash knockdown or did he look finished against a guy who was heavyweight champion for several years? What about Deontay Wilder? Let me tell you, Deontay Wilder is so tested by Luis Ortiz that the people running the fight pause the fight. The referee pauses the fight at the beginning of a round. So he could examine Deontay Wilder. Think about that. So given that both guys were so close to losses, understand, if the doctor looks at Wilder and just goes, his title is over, right? If, if Vladimir Klitschko didn't take his foot off the gas against a former sparring partner of his. If Klitschko didn't have a lot of compassion and instead decided to step on the gas, Anthony Joshua's title would have been gone up in smoke. So here, as if these guys aren't being offered enough money, we're somehow hearing that this fight will always be there. Aren't there other lions in the jungle right now? I don't, I don't, I don't get it. Are, are these guys so enconced in being champion that they don't realize that other guys are out there who want their titles? You gotta be kidding me, understand. All it takes is one bad night, as Mike Tyson found out. Right, And you could lose the position you have for this big fight to happen. Let me also say, too, that a lot of life, especially in sports, is an illusion. Right? It's an illusion. In other words, you see guys and you're thinking to yourself, my goodness, this guy is unbeatable. What could possibly go wrong? And then suddenly, terrible Terry Norris is on the canvas against fighters like Troy Walters. Right? Suddenly, Roberto Duran is losing to Kirkland Lang. I believe the truth is that we're all mortal. Right? That a guy looks invincible. Invincible until he's not. Smoking Joe Fraser's son, Marvis Fraser, gave an interview where he talked about how he was watching his father against George Foreman in Jamaica, for those who remember it, right? And his father hits the canvas the first time against Foreman, an unbeaten former Olympic gold medalist. His father hits the canvas and Marvis Fraser's first thought was, Daddy, stop playing. It never crossed Marvis's mind that Dad might have actually been caught and dropped, that the KO ratio on George Foreman's record was real. Let me, let me go further. George Foreman looked unbeatable. As unbeatable as Sonny Liston looked before Ali took him out. Let's remember George Foreman destroys Ken Norton. Then of course he fights Ali who's still around. We thought Foreman was gonna rule the 1970s. 
until the moment he didn't. Right? Now, let me say, I have no idea how Anthony Joshua and Deontay Wilder, even if they think they're unbeatable, could pass up on this history-making fight. To the Joshua people, hasn't Wilder already offered to fight Joshua in the United Kingdom? I don't, I don't get it. It's as if the Joshua folks think that Joshua will always get 80,000 people for his fights. Right, folks? Don't take success for granted. Right? You're only unbeaten once. Right? The minute you have a bad night and you lose, you lose that unbeaten status and this fight is no longer comparable to Ali Fraser, to Spinks, Iron Mike Tyson. Folks need to get this fight done. Let's talk about another fight where people are in a real laissez-faire manner, saying, oh, this fight will always be there. Worse yet, the guys are openly talking about fighting each other. They're just not signing a contract. They're just not actually doing it. Now, as I make this video, I believe Terence Crawford has had exactly one fight at welterweight. Folks, um, you can't talk about Terence Crawford as one of the great welterweight champions yet. You just can't. Now, this is a guy who many people consider to be the best fighter pound for pound in boxing. Victor Postal gave an interview before his fight against Josh Taylor, and he said, look, the only man I lost to was Terrence Crawford. <laughs> that was a badge of honor. Right? That's a badge of honor for Postal. Right? Well, well, let me just say, Terrence Crawford and Errol Spence, Spence, unbeaten. Unbeaten. Beaten. Right? Terrence Crawford and Errol Spence are talking about fighting each other. Right? Errol Spence just beat Carlos Ocampo. You're scratching your head. Not exactly a household name. Understand, Errol Spence has a huge reputation right now, just like Terrence Crawford does, at 147. But neither guy has really fought that many great fights at 147 pounds. Right? Spence did fight Cal Brook. He did. But of course, Cal Brook was coming off a loss, wasn't he? To Golovkin. And was squeezing himself back down to the 147 pound weight class where he decided after that Spence fight that he was no longer going to stick around. Right? And so my point to you is simply this. The public views a Terrence Crawford Errol Spence fight as a fight between two current great 147 pounders. Right? The problem with being the best pound for pound is that the fans expect so much of you. None of these men are bulletproof. Remember when Chocolatito was viewed by many as on the very short list of being the best in the sport pound for pound. When you have the title, you have to make the most of it. In my opinion, you have to fight the biggest fights because your title of being the best in the sport pound for pound might not always be there. Right? You're one off night away from being Chocolatito. Right? So let's stop kidding ourselves. To the Anthony Joshua, Deontay Wilder camps, and I'm dumbfounded here. I'm absolutely dumbfounded. Right, guys, get it done. 
get it done right now. You're being offered big money. This is your moment. Right, right now. This is your moment. Imagine if Fraser in the early 70s would have said, hey, you know what? This Ali fight will always be there. Let me go fight this guy, George Foreman, before I fight Ali, just so I can stay sharp, just so I can fight a guy who's a mandatory contender, etc. Right, folks? That's where the big mistakes are made. That's where Juan Manuel Lopez ends up having a chin problem. Right? So, let me just close by saying this too. Understand that great fights are really great moments. And the great moments don't last forever. Even with great fighters. Right? So, Lennox Lewis gets caught by Oliver McCall. It can happen that quickly, right? Where an unbeaten fighter gets caught at the wrong time and then has problems, right? So all I'm saying is when you're in a situation where a contemporary is a worthy foe, the fight could be legendary. The fans already view the opportunity as legendary. Take that opportunity. History is flooded with great fights that lifted both men. Right? Ali Fraser, Bo Holifield, Kalzagi Kessler, Leonard Hearns, Frotch Kessler, Right? Each of the fights I've named, you saw the fight and you thought, my goodness, is that Tommy Hearns up on his toes outboxing Ray Leonard? I mean, even at the end of the fight, you're thinking, man, Ali with a broken jaw goes the distance with Joe Fraser? You're thinking, man, Holifield wanted to keep that title, didn't he? You're thinking, man, did Carl Frotch lose this fight to Kessler because the fight was in Kessler's backyard? You have added respect for both the loser and the winner. That's a win-win for all. Let me tell you, too, when that first fight's a classic, when you end up with a Bo Holifield, Fans want to see Bo Holifield too, don't they? Hell, in that series, fans want to see Bo, Holl uh, Bo Holifield 3, right? Ray Leonard, people forget, fought Thomas Hearns again. By the way, we all know Tommy won that second fight, <laughs> but I'll let the boxing historians here online in the comment section to this video comment on how that second fight went down, right? Understand. Leonard Duran, right? They fought again. And then they fought a third time. These big fights can open the door for more big fights. They usually do. But you don't get there unless you take that first step. Now, how two unbeaten currently reigning heavyweight champions can decide that their fight will always be there in a knockout division escapes me. So let me just offer a challenge here at the end of the video. If you are one of those fans who believes that these big fights will always be there, if you want to overlook the parts of boxing history that include missed opportunities like Bo Lewis, Juan Ma against Yorkese Gamboa. Stevenson against Pascal. 
Garcia against Linares. Then let me hear from you in the comment section to this video. Is there anyone here other than members of Alexander Povetkin's family who wants to see Joshua fight Povetkin more than they want to see Joshua fight Deontay Wilder? Right? We know Wilder wants the fight to happen. Right? Joshua apparently is too busy to fight a reigning heavyweight champion who wants to fight him in Joshua's backyard. If you're one of these people who believes that this decision is justified, tell us why in the comment section to this video. Let me also add this. You know, there's a saying in boxing. You're paid for your last fight. Right? You know, Buster Douglas fights Mike Tyson for peanuts, really. Right? I believe he got a million dollars for the fight, but the fight generated a lot more money than that, right? You couldn't pay Buster Douglas peanuts after he beat Mike Tyson. Douglas gets paid, gets paid to fight Evander Holyfield. Isn't that the way the sport works? How would Joshua and Wilder fighting in front of, let's say, 80,000 people? Right? If they put on a good show, how would either of them hurt themselves monetarily in their follow up fight? Let me know in the comment section to this video. Thanks for stopping by.